welcome to my 3D character creation overview where I will show my steps of how I created Constantine Fire Art for Multiverse SA and how I also bring it and post it inside character create. My name is Ana Fabricio and I'm a 3D character artist from Brazil with 7 years of experience working in the game industry. My entire career is full based on remote work and I had the honor to work on projects such as Ira History of Dold, Retro Machina, Deathbound, Strongheart, Sentinels of Freedom, Beyond the Void, and also some commissions for small clients. So let's take a look at the project. In creating this character, my goal wasn't just to showcase my 3D character skills. I envisioned it as a design project fitting into the style of the game multiverses. I wanted to pose the character in many action poses and do mock-ups of costumes inside of the game, biting with its original characters. A way to show that the character belongs and fits into the universe. To kickstart the process, I collaborated with Francisco Matias, a talented artist I found on ArtStation, who helped me craft his study to the concepts of Constantine. His contribution was invaluable, and I'm grateful for his collaboration. Please check his portfolio. With each personal project, I try to incorporate new software or techniques to enhance my workflow. For this project, I found that posing characters in ZBrush was really time-consuming, especially without professional reading skills. To overcome this challenge, I discovered an in-depth tutorial by Michael Pavlovich on Character Creator 4. This tool not only streamlined my workflow, but also after a 30-day free trial, making it accessible for testing and more than enough time to test my ready-to-read character. Francisco handed me this model sheet to work with. So from there, I started blocking the character using three basic low-res spheres. In this step, all I'm worried about is matching the proportion of the concepts. In this second phase, I started adding some cloth blockout. I'm not worried about tiny details. Here, the most important thing is the silhouette of your character. At this stage, we realized that the character wasn't matching the style of the game. So Francisco decided to do a three-quarter view, and from there, I came to this result where I decided it's a good step forward to apology, so I could use as a base for the final high quality. This add-on inside Blender is called Retopoflow. It's a paid add-on, but I wanted to recommend it because it's totally worth it. It makes my work really faster and it reminds me of Topogun. So you guys definitely should check this one out. Another Blender paint add-on that I love is UV Backmaster. It does automatically UV in a super organized way that I've never seen before and it's very fast. Not just that, you can blend between organizing your UVs manually and filling the gaps back in with less important shells. It makes UV less time consuming and automates your workflow. So here's the final version of the high poly. From that I started block out the, the colors of the characters before I start the texturing phase. Today, I won't dive into each layer of my textures. Instead, I will highlight the significance of grayscale in stylized characters. In some stance painter, simply navigate to the display settings icon, activate pose effects, access color correction, and set the saturation slider to zero. That way, you can always check your values while making the texture. Since I wanted to emulate Constantine in a game that has been created, I examined gray scales and color variations by capturing screenshots of my characters and creating mockups in Photoshop with screenshots from the game. A lot of games have its own meter kits, so all I had to do was to download theirs in the game's website and test Constantine in different scenarios. This process helped me determine the effectiveness of my character matching the color values. Additionally, I recommend studying texture reference from the game itself. Analyze how skin textures are painted, how the colors of the latter looks like for example, and if there is presence of color gradients on characters. For the props, Francisco created the sheet with action poses for movesets. I chose some and gave myself a one full day to work in each of it. I used the same grayscale scale and mock-up testing for these assets because it had to be balance with the character. First off, I imported my FBX character to CC4. For rigging, I only selected the parts that I wanted to be influenced by the bones. So things like hair, eyes and teeth, it's hidden for now. Right away, you can see how powerful rigging in CC4 is because it allows you to edit everything and gives you image reference before you, you hit the auto-generate button. Since I'm not a reading expert, this saved me some headache. After auto-reading, there's plenty of animations you can test your character to see if everything is working correctly. Okay, so right now I'm using one of the movesets that Francisco drew. 
you can either start browsing from zero like I did, or use an animation and pause in a good keyframe and start from there. One of my favorite features of CC4 is applying presets of hands gestures. This will save you a tons of guessing words. Also, the hands controllers on the right side of the screen is again changing. You can click, hold and drag the palm of the hand and it will open or close the hands. Feels almost like cheating of how good is this feature for posing your character. Another awesome feature for CC4 is making your poses as presets. So I have saved previous poses and if I wanted I could go back to them and change it. You can even apply these poses to other characters as well. Here's some of my old 3D characters that it took around 15 minutes each to outrig and test presets poses. This preset also works with characters from CC4. So perhaps you can use them to make poses, save a preset and later apply to your character. After having a pretty good auto rigging and pose, I imported my model back to Blender to start refining it. First, I started painting out some OAT influences from bones that I didn't want to affect the head, for example. Then I fixed a, a bit of the arms. Making a character to interact with a prop is always a challenge, so I spent some time refining angles of the boobs and hands. This method, adding CC4 into my pipeline, really proved to be worth it because we all have been a place where you dedicated a lot of hours in your projects. Then sometimes we see in artist portfolios that there is a beautiful artwork piece, but it's only in your typos or ables. I bet most of the times it's because posing your character is a daunting task and time consuming, but with CC4 it makes it a lot easier. Here, as you can see, I'm using sculpting tools for the clothing. The main brushes I use for this method are grab, smooth, pose, and mask brushes. I separated some small objects such as buttons and the tie so they won't look distorted, but at the end I still end up stretching the buttons to give a dynamic feeling for the gesture. It's important to see your character from all angles, but I was mostly concerned about the angle that Constantine is going to look in a 3D fighting game. So that's the final look of the posing, which took me around 3 hours to complete. Versus, versus the time I've spent in another project, sometimes it took me like 2 or 3 days to, to complete Pebbles. So that concludes my overview in creating this character. I want to thank you Reillusion for noticing my work and giving the opportunity for show my workflow in CC4. A special thanks to Michael Pavlovich who created awesome videos of how to use CC4. Those videos came in really handy and helped me on finishing the last step of my personal projects in a very easy way. Hope you guys liked my video and feel free to DM me on ArtStation if you have any questions. See ya!